what? What's your stream delay on? Did you guys did you guys get on the uh, on the thing to be able to talk to people? This one. Uh huh. So are you seeing people's? Are you seeing anyone's uh, comments? Seven people, seventeen people in here. Okay. Seven people. Wait. Okay. Right here. Did you guys? Did you guys get on the? Okay. Okay. Turn that. Can you turn that off? Nick, turn it off because then we can't do this. Okay, Chris. Okay, you need to get, can you get closer to your mom or Chris, can you get on the other side so that I can look at you because you're gonna be my person that I'm talking to. Oh, good. I'm gonna make eye contact with you and I'll be super happy. I like this. Yes. And then the good news is, is that we get to eat all this stuff afterwards, right? That's the best. Okay, so you guys just tell me when I need to, when, when we're live. Hi, everyone. I don't know who's arrived yet, but if you've arrived, we're happy to have you. And as you can tell, I am peeling ginger right now because I have a lot of ginger and a lot of turmeric that I need to peel in order to be able to do all the recipes that we have um, in our recipe kit this evening. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep peeling my ginger. I'm using a wide mouth peeler. You can also use uh, the back of a spoon, but I like using these peelers. And then of course I'm not letting any of the peels go away. This is our compost, and um, we always keep our scraps, we always keep our ginger and our turmeric scraps because there are so many awesome things that we do with them. One of the things that we uh, do is uh, we make infused teas with the scraps from ginger and turmeric. You can also make stock out of it. Um, I also sometimes cook it and I grind it up and I make a curry out of it. There's just lots of things that you can do with your scraps. And because they are, uh, they have a lot of phytonutrients in them, because all the phytonutrients, many of the phytonutrients in our plants are actually in the skin. And when you're paying what? Anywhere from eight to $16 a pound for this and this, it's like, it's gold, it's like fish. Why would you ever throw any of it away, right? So. Julia Celeste Rosefield asks, how do you save scraps? Um, right here. How do you save them? You can freeze them, Julia. Julia, I love you. I know who you are. You're one of my besties. Julia Rosenfeld is on this evening. And um, so what I do is I just simply put them into a container and um, they hold in the refrigerator for a pretty long time. But if you would like to freeze them, you can absolutely do that. Um, then if you freeze them, obviously it changes their character slightly, but they're still, they're, they're still good if you freeze them. And something, Julia, that I also do, I live on the wild side. I will mix my turmeric scraps and my ginger scraps together. I will not keep them separated. That is also something that I do quite often. So for uh, the recipes that we had tonight, um, if you are someone that joined us, that, uh, that joined us in a meal kit, I apologize to all of those people who did not make the cutoff. We did not know that it would be so popular. And as many of you know, uh, the restaurant at Farm Table is very, very small. And we also are, most of our business right now is actually being done with meal plans. So we didn't have space to be able to offer people meal kits throughout the week. We actually just had to squeeze it into a really small period of time. And, uh, and, and so we will fix that next time with uh, better logistics and better communication. And, um, and one of the other things that, that we can do is uh, we will be sending out an email post, post uh, uh, class to everybody that signed up and everyone that RSVP. And when we do that, what we can do is we can um, uh, we can offer some alternative times that we can give meal plan meal kits to other people if somebody really wants us to put it together for them. So for the people that got their meal kits, they would have gotten everything in little measured out containers. So we tried to measure out all the ingredients from um, uh, without doing the work for them. So we measured out things like the sesame oil. We measured out things like the chia seeds. Like for instance. If you can believe this, this is a fourth of a cup of chia seeds. So this is a two ounce cup, but it actually holds a fourth of a cup of chia seeds. 
which is actually going to be for our um, carrot and sweet potato swipe, our hummus, that's going to go um, underneath our ceviche, but I wanted to walk you all through what I had done. So the people that ordered the meal kits, I asked them to try to fab as much of the ginger and the turmeric before the class as possible um, so that they would not run into as many problems um, uh, following us because uh, one of the things that when you take a, a class at farm table, one of the things that I often tell people is um, if you do your meal prepping on a particular day of the week and if you like a lot of the meal plan uh, uh, recipes that, that, that are in like our vegan cooking 101 class, Half the battle is just getting some of that mise en place done. So mise en place is that word that, that we use in our industry to say everything in its place. Um, but it's also, it helps a lot if you have, you know, fresh turmeric or fresh ginger in every single recipe that you're doing. And at Farm Table, we, we put fresh ginger and fresh turmeric in almost every single thing that we do. So um, what you could, um, one of the things that you can do with the, with the turmeric um, because the turmeric is not as fibrous as the uh, as the ginger, when you peel the turmeric, um, you can actually put it into your blender or put it into your uh, uh, Cuisinart, and you can you can let it do all the work, and then it'll chop it up uh, really nice and, and fine, and then you can keep that either in the freezer or in the refrigerator. So let's just say you get a bumper crop or something like that of turmeric, you can do that, and also. Um, all of us, if we go to the grocery store and if we find a nice piece of uh, ginger or turmeric and it has little um, it has little eyes coming out of it, you just have to look at it. You, you want to look for kind of a wide piece of ginger. And I might ask um, one of the people, um, one of my helpers here to run outside and grab in a petri dish. I have outside trying to sprout right now a piece of ginger. And so before the class is, is over, I'll show people what I'm doing, but I'm just I'm, I'm uh, soaking it in water and letting it actually germinate so that um, so that I can plant it in the ground and then it, it goes out sideways. And so you wanna find pieces of ginger that aren't like this, that aren't just like one piece, but you wanna find like a knob, a knob that is wide, that has lots of, of, of tendrils or lots of arms. And you want to um, look for some that already have little eyes poking out of them because then that's gonna mean that they, they will sprout more more, more quickly, you do not have to soak it in water, but it's actually really helpful when you do. So this particular ginger right here is actually a very light colored ginger. Um, ginger can, um, or uh, turmeric rather, this turmeric is, is very, very light in color. And, um, and oh, that looks nice. It's been outside, it's been, uh, it, it's been uh, soaking and, and, and germinating. But this is, this is what I have outside in my garden right now. And you can kind of see that so um, these are the little pieces, these are the little eyes that I was talking about. And so that's what you want. You want it to have eyes so that then you can put it in the ground and make it, uh, and make it actually grow and sprout and, and all of that. So, um, okay, so this turmeric is very light in color. Normally turmeric is gonna be much more this color. It's gonna be much more the color of a, like a sweet potato or a carrot. So, um, so I'd like to just talk a little bit about the first recipe that was in the recipe guide. Um, let's think about it in terms of pages. So on page one um, of our recipe guide, we had what I consider to be like the hallmark of the farm table kitchen, which is the, um, the house pickled ginger. So um, everyone raise your hand if you've been to farm table and if you've eaten that pickled ginger, the, the ginger meal starter. Okay, I see a lot of hands out there, right? So the pickled, um, the, the house pickled ginger or the ginger meal starter is really important because um, we actually get the digestive fire started when we eat pickled ginger before our meals. But the other thing that we like that we do, which is really cool, is that we hit all six flavors in the Ayurvedic flavor wheel. And if you ask me, well, why is that important? That's actually really important because if you think of each one of our internal organs, think about it being associated with a major uh, with one of the six flavors. So let's go over those six flavors real quickly. Pungent, which is represented in the ginger meal starter by the ginger. Astringent, which is represented by the turmeric. Uh, sour, which is represented by the lemon juice. We are now going into, we are now going into uh, summertime, so I would actually recommend that a lot of people start uh, using lime juice instead of lemon juice. And the reason we're all doing this thing is because my other son is trying to come in the back door with dogs, which would be a really, really bad idea. 
So, um, so, so we've gone through pungent, which is the ginger, uh, astringent, which is the turmeric, sour, which is our lemon juice, and then we have sweet, which is the honey, and we have bitter, which is the herb. And if you were, if, if you were one of the people that got the meal kit, we put two different types of mint in your, um, in, in your, in your ginger meal starter. We put spearmint, we put, uh, we put spearmint and, um, and, and regular mint in the, um, in the ginger meal starter. We put a, a little pinch of salt into, in, in, into the honey. And so all that actually has to be added now is, um, is, uh, is a little splash of, uh, of lemon juice. Okay, we're gonna leave that for later. And then what I'm gonna show you how to do is, uh, is how to pickle your own ginger. So we're going to, you can take a mandolin, um, any type of mandolin. This is not my ideal mandolin, but this is what I keep at home um, because uh, my other son really likes me to make him these, uh, this potato dish in the morning for breakfast. And so I can make a potato dish uh, in about three minutes when I use this and I just, it's very easy. So I use this. Um, when you're using a mandolin, you always wanna bring your fingers in because the worst thing that you can do is slice your fingers um, on this mandolin and then have to go to the hospital. Um, that's definitely something we wanna avoid. So because the ginger is really fibrous, I am going to actually be, uh, I'm gonna start on the long side because I'm actually going to wanna go like with the grain here. So I'm gonna make some little uh, very thin slices of ginger. Before you guys came on camera, what I did is I took my hot water kettle right here, I heated it up, and I bloomed uh, uh, turmeric with lemon juice and a little bit of water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this marinate. Um, I'm also going to, I'm gonna grab a spoon. And so again, all this has is a little bit of water, lemon juice, and now the fresh turmeric. And uh, so hot water that bloomed the, the dry turmeric and you can use fresh turmeric. It's just that um, you know we go through so much of this, it would be cost prohibitive for us to use the fresh turmeric all the time. So here in this case, the, 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 the powdered turmeric actually works pretty well. And then I've already added my lemon juice to this. So I'm gonna let this marinate. And at the end of the class, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of this house pickled ginger and we're gonna add it to this right here, which is gonna be, which are the other ingredients for our ginger meal starter. And we're gonna have that before, before we have our meal. And again, the reason we wanna do that is because you have all six flavors in the Ayurvedic flavor wheel and because you have the ginger, which is a digestive aid, right? So if you have that before your meal, you're able to, um, you're actually able to digest your food better and it just makes all of the organs function because all those flavors are communicating with all the internal organs in your body and it, they act as a, like a tonic for the internal organs. So that's a really important thing. So now what we're going to do is um, we're going to talk a little bit about the scraps. So um, the, next, the next recipe on page one was the uh, turmeric, ginger, uh, uh, turmeric ginger black pepper tea. So most people know that when you, combine, when you combine turmeric and black pepper, you create a nutritional synergy. And so when you create... Uh, when you put these two uh, things together, they actually accentuate one another. So they, they, the black pepper and the turmeric together make both the black pepper and the turmeric more anti-inflammatory. So you can dry toast. Oh, oh, that's really good. Um, you can dry toast your, um, you can dry toast your black pepper corns in a uh, in a skillet. So if you look behind me here. If you look behind me, I have a skillet and I've already started dry toasting all of the spices that are gonna go in the beet crema. So, um, so I am a huge proponent of dry toasting. Dry toasting is such an awesome thing to do. And, um, and so highly recommend it. Once you dry toast the black peppercorns, you can use them for everything. You can use them for a tea. You can use them for like actually grinding and making your own pepper. Uh, so if you act, so if you have um, like a spice grinder at home, or if you really want to do everything by hand, you have a mortar and pestle, you can do that as well. Is there a question? Um, Pam Landon says, which flavor, which organ? Which flavor, which organ? Um, tell her I will follow up with her. I will t I will follow up with her at the end of class on that. Um, or I can also send her a diagram at the end of class 
um, in the follow-up email because that would take kind of a long time to explain right now. So this black peppercorn is going to go into some water right here. And so I'm going to put my black peppercorns in here. And I'm going to put all my scraps or some of my scraps from my ginger and my turmeric. And I'm going to put those right here. And so this is an infusion. If you have an Instapot at home, if you have an electric pressure cooker, it works really, really well. Um, you're going to get a lot more um, flavor from your electric pressure cooker and you're going to do it in less time. So uh, if I cook this stove top, which I absolutely can do, there's nothing wrong with it. I would want to cook this at a very, very low heat, almost like never bringing it to a boil. And I'd want to cook it for a long period of time, maybe like four or six hours. Uh, because I'd want to get as much infusion out of these things as possible, and I wouldn't want to overboil um, everything. Uh, if I did it in an electric pressure cooker, I would fill it to the line. I would probably, it would either be a six quart or an eight quart, and um, I would strain out the ingredients, and then I might keep the ingredients and save those for a stock, because I can get another, I, I can get one more use out of them, um, and then the tea can either be served cold or it can be served hot. And either way, it's gonna be great. So those are all the recipes from page one. We had the um, we have the house pickle ginger, which is ultimately going to be our um, it's gonna go into our ginger meal starter, uh, which was the second recipe. And then our third recipe was the um, was the uh, turmeric ginger black pepper tea. And so with that, we're gonna move on. And we're going to move on to the second page, which was the uh, carrot. Uh, I call it the carrot chia hummus. So um, just so you know, I use the word hummus loosely. If you think a hummus has garbanzo beans in it, then we may not have the same definition of a hummus. So for me, a hummus is basically any plant that is pureed and that you use as a base, as a dip uh, for, uh, for, for any dish. And so at farm table, we do a lot of hummuses, but they don't have garbanzo beans in them. Love garbanzo beans, don't have anything against garbanzo beans, but I just try, one of the things that you're gonna learn when we go through the class is like, for instance, um, when we do the beet noodles, we're gonna be left with a little mushroom, and a lot of times when we do uh, beet ribbons or we do other things, we're left with these little odd looking pieces of vegetables that actually don't look very nice. And so by steaming them, and then pureeing them, you give them another life, and then you can use all your scraps. So the whole idea is that like, if you create one recipe, and if you're left with little pieces of another, you know, you're left with, with, with scraps, find a way or find a recipe, create a recipe to be able to utilize those scraps so that you have zero scraps. Because really, you know, your compost bin should, should, should be a last resort. It should not be something that you're using as a crutch because you, you're, you're wasting food. So the whole idea here is for us not to waste food because if we're buying our food locally and if we're eating on a seasonal basis, more than likely we're paying more for our produce, which is good. That's called an insurance policy, okay? That's called preventative health care. But why would you not get all the value out of that produce, right? Why would you not do that? So I'm a huge proponent of, of using every little last crack. So, I, um, so if you look at the recipe, the recipe tells you to steam the carrots and to steam the sweet potato. And I just wanted to point something out. So for this recipe right here, um, and this recipe looks really nice, um, it, it's, it's not complete yet, but um, this, is the, um, this is the sweet potato and the carrot. There's only, there's one pound of carrots in here that have been steamed. I trimmed the ends off after I steamed them. I, 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 I pureed them in this Cuisinart right here, um, added a little bit of uh, lemon juice to it um, and salt and that's it. And so I just wanna uh, say that when you steam vegetables and you don't over steam them, um, they retain their color and they retain their nutrients. And that's another thing I love about electric pressure cookers. I did not use an electric pressure cooker for this. I just steamed it stove top, okay? But when uh, but one of the other things that, that so I steamed the sweet potato, uh, which is, a, a, we have about a half cup of sweet potato in that recipe, um, and one pound of carrots. So I steamed everything together. I actually put my beets that I used for the beet crema that are right here that, um, that I just peeled, right? I put those in the bottom of my pan with water. 
uh, because they're a little harder. They take a little bit more time to cook. And then um, because it's only a half cup of sweet potato, we adjust uh, uh, for all the meal uh, kits, we just cut pieces of sweet potato. So I put the one pound of carrots and the little piece of sweet potato in the basket on top of the saucepan with the beets on the bottom. So I was able to cook everything really at the same, you know, at once. I didn't have to use three different pots. But what I wanna point out here is at the same time in my oven, I cooked a sweet potato. Um, and this is a white sweet potato. So, um, so this is a sweet potato that has white skin, as you can see here. And I just wanna point this out because you can play with stuff. You can play with stuff. You don't always have to think of a sweet potato as being you know, that cantaloupe color. Um, there's purple sweet potatoes, there's white sweet potatoes, and they're all absolutely delicious. And they will taste very different depending on how you cook them. So a sweet potato, generally starts to caramelize or, be, or, or turn into sugar um, uh, at 170 degrees internally. So if you, um, so if you, it makes sense that if you, that if you roast your sweet potato and you get all those nice caramels coming out, it's going to taste, it's going to have more depth of flavor and it's going to be stronger. And that might be something that you want. And it might be something that you don't want. You may not want that sweet potato to compete with what you've got. So if you steam a sweet potato or if you roast a sweet potato, I challenge you to do the same recipe and just do two different techniques and see which one you like better. But it could also have, you know, it could also be a part of like, or um, uh, it could affect, you know, the kind of fish that you're using if you're making it with the ceviche or the types of vegetables, if they're really strong or, you know, did you roast those vegetables in tahini? Um, do you want something lighter so that the, so that the tahini kind of, you know, is the main, player or the protagonist, or do you want the sweet potato to play a more uh, important role? So those are important things. Um, this particular recipe um, has a little bit of sesame oil in it, so it's toasted sesame oil. You do not have to add this. You could add olive oil. You could add hemp seed oil. You could add any oil that you want. We just wanted to make it a little Asian. Yes, sir. Okay, Julia Rosenfield asks, do you peel your carrots? I did peel some that look nasty. It didn't say to or to peel the sweet potato. Okay, okay, good. Um, so on the um, so the sweet potato, and by the way, Julia, you'll probably you'll probably edit all these recipes for me after this uh, thing. Love you to pieces. Um, so she's an amazing copywriter, by the way. Uh, so she's uh, so the I never ever ever peel my carrots. I don't believe in it. I think it's uh, almost like sacrilegious to peel your carrots. So I don't like doing it. But, um, uh, and I also like to cook sweet potatoes with the skin on, but for the recipe for blending it in here, you wanna remove the skin from the sweet potato. You do not wanna remove the skin from the, from the carrots. So you will be cooking the, uh, the carrots and the sweet potato skin on, both of them at the same time, um, and then when you blend them, you will, uh, when you blend them, you will remove the skin from the sweet potato. Um, another question. Okay. Um, do you have a toasted sesame seed oil that you recommend or love? Um, I like, I, um, I like Spectrum. That's a good brand. Um, and it's readily available, you know, at your, at, at your grocery store or your online retailer. Okay, so we have our uh, we have our carrot chia hummus here, and I'm going to put this to the side because this is going to be something that we use for plating, and then um, we're going to jump now to our we're actually going to jump now to our ceviche. So um, who here thinks that a ceviche is something that's been marinated in lime juice or lemon juice for a really 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 long time? Okay, so whoever thinks that. This, I'm hoping that this will change your opinion um, of ceviche because the way that I believe in doing ceviche is a little bit different. Um, I believe that ceviche should be flash marinated and that it should be, um, and it should really only hit your, um, it should hit your, your acid really no more than five minutes before serving. So. If truth be known, this is one of those like kitchen confidential things. A true ceviche 
And this is in the style that they do it in Peru, which is obviously, you know, it's influenced by the Japanese uh, that came there at the turn of the, the uh, century because they were working on guano plantations, back guano plantations. This is my, my trash. Um, it's, um, uh, it's really cooked with salt. So um, all the recipes in our meal kit had pink salt here. And um, there, you know, pink salt is actually uh, uh, harvested in the Andes. But um, right now, I am, you know, for I guess the last couple of years, I've really been into pink salt and, as opposed to sea salt because we really don't know what's in our oceans. We do know what's in our oceans, and we don't want to know what's in our oceans. And um, I like the the flavor. I like the mineral content in it. Um, so I prefer uh, pink salt. So this is what we're going to use. As you can see, I have two bowls here. You don't have to use two bowls with ice, but I figured I'd show you the proper way uh, to do it because you really do want your ceviche to be really cold. So when you're making the ceviche, if you want your leche tigre, if you want the protein um, and the acid to react well, and you want that nice cloudy, uh, um, that, that cloudiness, this is what we're talking about. So if you received your meal kit, you received a piece of uh, salmon. I also want to let you know that you do not, you do not have to use salmon. You can use any fish uh, that you like, as long as it's fresh and as long as it's a fish that you like. I particular, I personally like more oily fish, so that's why um, I chose the salmon. And it's also, you know, it's unforgiving. So um, let's see here. Hopefully, what we're going to do now is um, is show people how to remove the skin. From, from, their, uh, from, from their piece of fish. So you can also ask the, uh, the people um, at the fish counter at, uh, at either, you know, uh, at one of your local grocery stores. But what I like to do is I like to take the end, I like to take a little end off right here. And what you're doing is the, when you, as long as you have a sharp knife, you're fine. Um, what, what turns into a really big issue is when you don't have a sharp knife, uh, but it, and, and you don't want to use a, be, be using a small paring knife either. You really want to be using a knife that can allow you to go the length of the, the fish here. And so if you grab it with if, if you grab it with your thumb. Hey Chef. Yes. Um, Brian Tombetta asks, do you use lime or lemon as your acid? It depends. It depends what season it is. But tell him it. Um, tell him we'll get to that in just a second. Okay. So. Um, so I'm going to hold this, and sometimes it, it helps to grab a, uh, to use a, a kitchen towel, right? To use a kitchen towel to grab the, uh, the skin so, that you, so, it's not, uh, so it's not slippery. And then if you notice, I'm keeping my, my, my knife, I'm keeping my blade almost like I'm going into, into, the, uh, into the, the, the cutting board, okay? and then it comes off. And then what you can do is you can actually put it, um, you can put it on a pan. So you can put it on a pan like this. You would wanna put it on something like a, like sill pat, and you can uh, put it on a really low heat in the oven, and then you can have it crispy. And that can be an additional garnish for you if you, if you wanna use it that way. You can dehydrate it as well. So, um, so here's the next thing. When you, when you take the skin off the fish, you're, you're left with some of this stuff right here, okay? And so what we wanna do when we're making ceviche, it's okay um, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove some of this, we're gonna remove some of this stuff and that's gonna go into our leche de tigre. So has anyone ever heard of this term, leche de tigre? Yes, no, maybe so? Okay. This is lemon juice. So to Ryan's question, I'm using lemon juice today, okay? I prefer lemon juice to lime juice, and I'm gonna tell you here in the United States. If I were in Mexico, I'd probably choose lime. But if I'm here in the United States, or if I was in Peru, I would definitely be choosing lime. But here in the United States, I choose lemon. And the reason I, that is, is because um, the limes are different, and it, typically in these countries, they're not, everything's not a sweet Persian lime. So if you use a super, super, super sweet Persian lime, your ceviche is gonna taste like lemonade. 
and that's not what you want. The trick to ceviche is really uh, is uh, is to have a lot of acid, and so you want a very very strong acid flavor, and you don't want it to be super sweet. I'm also not a proponent of putting fruit into ceviche. I'm kind of a traditionalist when it when it comes to that. I just want I want a good I want good acid. I want heat. I want garlic. I want celery. You can add ginger. I like ginger. I like you know I like ginger. Everybody here knows I like ginger. I like ginger. I like turmeric. And uh, and then also just having really fresh fish. That's the trick to a really good ceviche. And when the next thing that we're going to do here is we are going to make sure that all of our pieces that all of our pieces are are the same uh, or, or the same um, the same size. Okay. You also want to make sure that there's no bones. So you're going to make sure you're going to run your, your, your hands up and down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to begin to cut in long strips here. Okay. And then if, if I was a, a, a true ceviche Nazi here, I would have a little uh, bowl of water and I'd be dipping my knife in it because, uh, because uh, I'd want all of my cuts to be, uh, to, to be more clean with the water, but I'm not that much of a Nazi, of a, of a ceviche Nazi. So as you can tell, the pieces of ceviche, they should be bite size. So that's a good, that's a good uh, uh, measurement there. And I'm gonna put them into my ice cold, I'm putting them into my ice cold uh, bath here. So there's no, there's no salt in this yet, but the first thing that, that, is, that my ceviche is gonna get is going to be salt, okay? And as we as we talk and as we do the next uh, ingredients here. Hey chef. Yes, sir. Athena asks, what about small Mexican key lines? Yes, absolutely. As long as they are, as long as they are not too sweet. But Mexican key limes are the ticket. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then. Um, if anyone here is afraid of habanero, I hope that after this class, you won't be. The reason that we're using habanero in this recipe and the reason why I do not recommend that you use a jalapeno, a serrano, which are great, but for this, I don't like it because I want a chili that has a fruity bouquet. So if you cut a chili like a serrano. Can you move the scrap bucket? The scrap bucket? This? Okay. So if I um, uh, so if I were to um, and this is not the scrap bucket. This is our leche de tigre. Okay. So um, so if I what was I saying? If I uh, what was I saying? Habaneros. Oh. So if you if you cut a habanero and you smell it without letting it like you know enchilar, without letting it, it like completely uh, completely overcome you. You're gonna notice that it has a really sweet flavor profile, really sweet. It's almost, uh, it's floral, it's fruity. If you cut into a serrano, and if you cut into a jalapeno, you're gonna notice that the jalapeno and the serrano, they smell like freshly cut grass. It's completely different. It's a completely different flavor profile. And they're great, they're great for, for certain recipes, but I don't enjoy them for this type of, um, of ceviche here. And another thing I guess I should have I should have prefaced at the beginning of the class and I didn't is that um, one of the other things I should have prefaced is that um, this is technically not a ceviche because it doesn't have any onion in it. It's technically a tiradito, but um, that's a level of um, I guess that's a level of of. Um, it, it matters to me, but for most people, they don't matter. So anyway, so just FYI, to any Peruvian out there that sees that this is a ceviche and that there's no red onion in it, I'm fully aware that um, I call it a ceviche because most people in San Antonio um, and in Texas probably wouldn't know exactly what a tiradito is, and it, it, it would probably be a little too, um, it might be too intimidating to them. So people understand ceviche. So if you notice, um, I just grabbed two very generous pinches of salt and I don't know if you can see this but but now what that salt is
is going to do? It's going to pull out all the water that is inside the fish. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a layer of protein on the outside of that fish that's going to protect it so that when my lemon juice, when my leche tigre hits it, it's going to be awesome. Okay? Hey, Chef. Yeah. Uh, would you please spell the thing that is not the ceviche? Leche de tigre? No, the yeah, tiradito. Oh, T-I-R-A-D-I-T-O. Tiradito. Okay. So the next thing that's going to go into our uh, the next thing that's going to go into our leche tigre is going to be uh, celery. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take um, this is actually going to be part of our uh, of our ceviche. And um, and I'm peeling the the celery because it makes it really aromatic. By the way, celery is really anti-inflammatory. Um, and we use celery a lot for making beverages and teas and things like that. So these scraps, they don't go in here. This is our compost. These scraps, they go into our leche tigre, okay? So here we go. Here's our next one. Okay, who's getting hungry? Me. Looking at all this good fish. I have some more fish off that, that uh, when we go off camera, we're gonna, that's what we're gonna have for dinner around here. We're gonna have some more fish. My brother-in-law went fishing um, at a rig called El Perdido, way out, nine, I think they said it was 9,000 feet depth at this particular one. So crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to chop our celery. Follow me here. We're gonna chop our celery really thin, okay? This celery is gonna be part of our garnish. And I like it because it gets a little tooth feel, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this over here in with my ceviche. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in there. And as I chop and I dice my different ingredients, they're gonna go all into the ceviche because I don't wanna have too many bowls to, to wash at the end of this. I want it all to be easy cleanup. So we, we, we steamed everything in one pot with different layers. Remember, we talked about that. You can do the exact same thing in an electric pressure cooker. You just arrange things differently. Um, I've even used a rice cooker with a steamer basket for steaming. So there's a lot of different things that you can do, okay? And nobody wants to get that, that, that hairiness, right, of the of the, the celery in their teeth when they eat it, that's not very enjoyable. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna tackle the habanero, okay? Don't get scared, because all you need to not do is rub your eyes. And you're not even supposed to be doing that anyway because we're in COVID, right? So don't touch your nose, don't touch your eyes, do this if you have to, but don't do anything else. So I cut off the end and I put it into my leche tigre, okay? The scrap, the scrap bowl is my, my, my uh, son called it. Uh, then I'm gonna use the natural architecture of the, of, of the habanero, and I'm going to cut around the really, really, really crazy hot part. You see this? And then I'm gonna take my knife, I'm gonna break up that capsaicin oil because all of the capsaicin, all the heat, is actually in the placenta, which is feeding the seeds. It's not in the seeds itself. And then I'm gonna dump that in there. So now I have my leche tigre, right? And then I'm gonna take this habanero and I'm gonna just kind of plaster it down like this. And I'm gonna do a fine julienne on this. And if I want to make it smaller, like if I was doing this for a cocktail, um, and they were getting it in really small little cups. I would go smaller on this, but because we're not, uh, we're, we're just uh, going to have this, you know, more informally in a, in a larger bowl. I'm not going to go smaller. So uh, just go ahead and chop up your your habanero, okay? And one is all you need for this recipe. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our microplane out. Hopefully everyone has a microplane. That's a, another uh, tool that I recommended for this class. So it's what you might use for uh, grating cheese. 
Um, but we actually use it for grating ginger, turmeric, and garlic. And of course, if you say, no, I don't like to do that. I want to do the garlic all by myself, you know, with a knife. You can absolutely do that. It's just going to take more time. So um, as you can see, I'm putting everything into my leche tigre. Absolutely nothing goes away. So um, I will take out the German. This is the little, this is the little, uh, this is when the, when it becomes botanically mature. I don't want that because this is a raw recipe and I think the raw German is a little bit aggressive, so I don't like that. So if I were doing this into a paste, what I would do is I would chop this up. Then I would grab some of my salt, okay? And I would go over it again with my knife. And then here comes the fun part. If you just wanna have like a glass of wine and you just wanna chill out and you wanna like play with your knife, this is a fun thing to do. So I'll take a, a little drink of my rosé. And then I'm gonna move things around here a little bit because I'm trying to be a little bit orderly. And so I'm gonna take my knife I'm gonna start over here, and I'm gonna not get my fingers underneath the blade. I'm gonna keep my fingers right up here, and I'm gonna press this down, and I'm gonna use the salt as the friction to create a beautiful paste out of my garlic here, and it's really fun to do. And so if you're making like a dry rub, if you're you know, seasoning meat, and anything calls for a minced, you know, don't ever get that, get out that piece of equipment, that ginger or the garlic mincer. I, I, I don't, I, I don't like those things. Um, you can just do the same thing right here with your knife, just the way I'm doing it. Or you, I'm going to show you how to do it with a microplane, which is also really simple. But if your ginger is nearing botanical maturity, and if it has that little German in it, it makes it hard. So, now I have this beautiful, beautiful ginger paste, and I'm going to put this ginger paste right here into my leche tigre. Ginger, uh, the, uh, did I say ginger? The garlic. Sorry. Okay. So now I'm going to take the skin off of this right here, and then I'm going to look for my microplane which I normally... Hey Jeff, how much salt do you use in the fish? Um, I use two pinches. Two pinches of salt. Okay, so here's my microplane. And then, um, so if I don't do what I just did, I'm going to do this. But you get left with little things that you can't do anything with. So either this goes into the leche tigre, or you start off with another with another one. I'm gonna put this clove right here into my leche tigre, and I'm gonna continue, I'm gonna continue to stir this around, okay? So now it has salt, it has garlic, it has celery, it has the um, habanero, and the only thing now that I'm missing is my ginger, my turmeric, and then I also have vanilla flakes. So this is an optional thing, guys. This is, they call it Parmesan of the Sea. You wanna buy a really nice brand. There's, um, I think Eden is a brand that I buy. Um, it's, uh, uh, you find it in the Asian um, section of the grocery store. It's ridiculous that we even have ethnic sections of the grocery stores, but we do. Um, and so if you smell it, it's got this really smoky, really amazing flavor to it and it's loaded with umami so umami is something that is either that we find either naturally in the world through plants and animals um, or um, or it's artificially made so everyone here has heard of msg everybody here has probably heard of ahinomoto they're the people that produce msg and so what they do is they artificially create umami which is that sixth uh, it's, they, they, they call it the the uh, the fifth taste, um, and it's the um, it's a flavor reaction that your body has to glutamic acid. And so when you go back for something two or three times, typically you're having a flavor reaction, and it's because umami is exponential. And we'll have to do an entire other cooking 
demo specifically on umami math. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take I'm going to take a, a pinch of this and I'm going to put it into my leche tigre. And this is going to balance out the flavors in my leche tigre. So if my if my acid, if my if let's just say that I picked a Persian lime and it was really, really sweet. Or let's say that my lemon was really, really sour. By adding my Bonita Flakes, it levels everything out. And if you say, hey, I'm a vegan and I don't want to use that, great. You do not have to use that. Add more garlic. And you could take this exact same Leche Tigre recipe and you could apply it to mushrooms. You could apply it to, you know, so many different things. You don't just have to use uh, fish. There are lots of beautiful recipes that you can make with plants and mushrooms because they have a ton of umami in them are a great, uh, a great option. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grate my ginger. And this ginger is actually going to go into my leche tigre. Okay, and then I have my turmeric. And my turmeric is going to give it a beautiful color. If the turmeric was a different color, it would be more, more orange but this is gonna be a little bit more mellow. Okay, and so when, we, when we're when we left with, you know, at the end, we're gonna take all of this awesomeness, because it's just all loaded with flavor, and we are going to put that into our leche tigre, right? And voila, there we go. Now we're almost nearing the end, okay? I'm gonna add just a little bit more ginger to this. And by the way, um, I had somebody the other day tell me that their doctor had told them not to eat ginger. And um, sometimes people can have a lot of heat in their body. They can have what we call a pitta imbalance. Um, if you wanna learn more about the body types, you can go to our website. We have different blogs uh, on the different Ayurvedic body types. But basically, Fresh ginger and fresh turmeric are pretty tridoshic, meaning that they're good for all three body types. It's when you start getting into the dry ginger and the dry turmeric that it can be more aggressive. And if you really truly have an imbalance of like heat in your body, you don't want to be putting dry ginger like into your food. But but fresh ginger, fresh ginger and fresh turmeric are very healing. They're very anti-inflammatory. And right now, right now with with uh, with you know, the, the world that we're living in. Thank you, Nick. Uh, <laughs> um, the world that we're living in right now with COVID, um, uh, this is, a, the, ginger in particular is a complete superfood. So reduces mucus in the lungs, reduces mucus in the lungs, re reduces mucus in the nose. It's a natural antiseptic and it's a digestive aid why would you not want to be eating this for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? I don't understand. So I do. I, I eat ginger for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, I put a piece of ginger in my tea in the morning. Um, I drink hot ginger tea throughout the day. And a lot of the food that I have um, that I eat at farm table um, has natural ginger and turmeric. So you can see that um, it almost looks a little coconut milky, doesn't it? So the natural... The, the natural fat from the, the different pieces of uh, fish have come out. So I'm gonna put this right here. Now you can see all the salt. Oh, I want you to look at this. The salmon, I feel like it looks different. It has a glossy, it has a glossiness to it, okay? Now that all of the, uh, the salt has pulled the water out, remember I haven't put any, anything in here and look at how glossy it is. It's wet because it started pulling out. <clears throat> It has started to pull out, <clears throat> excuse me, it started to pull out all the water. So you're gonna take a strainer and you're gonna start adding a little bit of this at a time, okay? Not too much. And whenever you do that, you can just, you know, uh, uh, try and get as much out of that as possible. And then quite frankly, this can go right back there. How long does this leche tigre last? Well, that's a good question. If you add, if you add fish to your leche tigre, um, 
Uh, it's gonna have it's gonna have a shorter shelf life, but you can create almost like a leche tigre madre. So you know, as long as you keep feeding it acid and you keep it refrigerated, it can actually last for a really long time, and it develops a really really nice flavor because it's preserving the fish that the fish scraps that are in here are being preserved. So I'm gonna grab my my spoon here, and what I'm gonna do is my fish is now really nice and cold. And I'm just gonna keep, I'm gonna keep uh, uh, stirring this. And as I stir it, and as I provoke, you know, it provokes more milkiness. And as you can see, this right here has a milky color, and that's why they call it leche de tigre. And so I'm just gonna keep, I'm gonna keep mixing it here for a minute, and then I'm gonna grab a. Uh, I'm actually gonna have Nick. Nick, will you hand me a uh, plate from up above you, baby? A white one. Hand me a white plate. All right. And he's handing me a plate. There we go. And you can use a bowl. You can use a plate. You can use uh, a plate bowl. We've had fun with that at farm table. Sometimes we put bowls into plates and people have said, what's that plate bowl? Anyway, that's an inside joke. I'm sure you guys did not get that one. So, uh, so what I'm gonna do is just make a little bed here. And why do I add chia seeds to my hummus? Does anybody know? Chia seeds are really, really hydrating. Um, and so here we are, we're going, into the, we're going into the summer months and it's about to get really, really, really hot. And so this is a great way for you to keep moisture inside your body um, and keep yourself really nice and hydrated. And so we're gonna put some ceviche here. We're not gonna do all of it. And the other thing that I love to garnish with um, is celery leaves. It's really cheap and it's really nice and it gives a beautiful flavor. And I like it because when I put my oil on top, guess what's not gonna happen? They're not gonna just go on me, right? So they like, the, you know, celery leaves really keep their, their shape, which is super nice and I like that. And I also like the crunch and the flavor. I love it. So um, we're gonna do this. This is These are my sesame seeds. These are my sesame seeds that have already been, um, uh, normally what we do is we, we, we drizzle with a little bit of uh, more sesame oil because this particular dish, the way we serve it, it's more Nikkei style. Again, you don't have to do that. You could do no oil, you could do olive oil, you could do any oil that you want. The oil that he is here is just, it's really more for a garnish. Um, but we, uh, to, to save space um, with the meal kits, what we did is we just added the, um, we added the black sesame seeds to the, um, to the oil. And so now I'm just gonna try and get these off my, uh, get these off my fingers, cause they're a little sticky. Um, but they add a nice crunch. And one of the things that I like to do when I build a, when I build a particular um, dish is I like to have different layers. I like to have different crunch layers throughout the dish and I and uh, and here it almost looks like a little bit of caviar it looks really kind of fun and cool right so um, does anybody have any questions about the about the uh, ceviche no okay great so this ceviche is now is now done I'm gonna put it right here on the table there we go and now we're going to move to um, we're gonna move to the next recipe and we're gonna serve this family style after the, uh, after the dinner. So I'm just gonna put the rest of that there as well as our chia hummus. I'm a real big proponent of families eating together. And so my boys get kind of annoyed with it. But um, you know, when I'm here at the house or when I come home from work, we sit down at the table and we eat. And so we, I try to set a nice table you know, uh, I try to set silverware down. I try to make everybody have, you know, put their napkin in their lap, eat properly with a fork and knife. And it just, I love sitting at the table and enjoying a meal with my kids and watching them use their table manners that I have taught them. So love that because I tell them they're gonna thank me one day when they're up. at can a, a- Can we get a close up of the dish? Sure. Okay, there we go. Okay, 
So all kids that are watching have good table manners because one day if you're on an interview or something, you want to be able to show people that like, you know, you can hold a conversation, that you know how to use a fork and knife, that you know how to use your napkin, all that kind of stuff is really good. Okay. So we are going to, we are going to, to turn over our, um, our, our tablet here. And now we're going to do meat noodles. Okay. So, um, I brought, I wanted to show you this particular, um, attachment. So oops, if, if you do not have a spiralizer at home, if you have a KitchenAid attachment, or if you have a, a like a Cuisinart or a KitchenAid food processor, it doesn't matter what brand it is. But if you have a greater attachment, you can make this exact recipe that we're gonna make right now, but you can actually make it with a, um, with a food processor, okay? And so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make beet noodles. And so uh, this is a very large beet. I consider it to be a very large beet. I peeled it prior to class and I cut the end, the, 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 the woody end off of the beet because when we do our noodles, okay, when we do our noodles, um, this, this, uh, this piece right here will not fit well into this if, if it has the butt on there. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're gonna have our bowl here and we're gonna try and I'm gonna try and see if I'm strong enough to do this because you, with these machines, you really have to try to make, my hands aren't quite wide enough. So you see these beautiful noodles coming out? So this is gonna be a salad that we do. Okay, and I like to serve this salad. You can either serve it vegan the way we're doing it, or you can get any piece of uh, seafood. Uh, I really love serving it with crab. Crab is really, really nice. Okay. Let's see if I can. I have a hard time doing this one. I'm not quite strong enough. My hands aren't, aren't wide enough to do. So what you're gonna see is that we're left with a little mushroom at the end. And we're gonna make, we're gonna make a crema, or like a salad dressing, if you will, out of the, um, the scraps. Um, we, here, we didn't use the scraps, we used full beets, but we actually created this recipe in the cafe because we end up, when we make these beautiful noodles that we serve on our dishes, in the cafe, we're left with these weird little uh, mushroom caps. Very weird mushroom caps. And so I haven't figured out something fun to do with the mushroom caps so they go into the beet crema. Okay. okay. I might have to have my 15 year old son come over here and, and help me with this. with this really, really funny looking uh, mushroom. Um, and so when you're left with these mushrooms, if you steam them, they are the perfect ingredient for your beet crema, okay? So I'm gonna put this right here. This uh, salad right here is gonna get a little bit of lemon juice, and it's also going to get um, a little bit of ginger, okay? So if we put a little bit of, a little bit of lemon juice here, like this, I'm gonna grate a little bit more fresh ginger. And if you don't want your hands to be red or orange, you can wear gloves. 
but since I'm here at my house, I'm not wearing gloves, okay? And I think the ginger here sets this off. It's absolutely delicious. And so um, another thing you can do is you can use, you can actually use the, um, uh, the juice from this, this marinade, and you can drink it almost like a shot. It's delicious. So when you make this recipe and it sits in your refrigerator for a couple days, the beets will give off water and it'll create uh, like a little beet shot for you that you can use. And so if you're somebody that really likes to have these noodles and that's what you want on your, on, on your salad, great. If you don't like the noodles and they bother you, no problem. Cut them with, with scissors. I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt to this. And then we're gonna let this sit on the side, okay? We're gonna let this sit right here. And then I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. There we go. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our beet crema, which is really easy. I highly recommend that you use a blender, but if you have a food processor and you don't have a blender, it can work as well. The only issue is that, um, is that it may not blend as well as you would like it to blend. So I'm gonna bring the other ingredients that are part of our chutney right here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to begin blending this and I'm gonna to try to blend it for as little time as possible so that when we finish our blending, we can talk about how we're gonna garnish this as we're making our cilantro chutney. And I'm gonna tell you all the other things that you can make with your chutney as well. Okay, so um, in the recipe for your beet crema, um, it called for uh, it called for soaked cashews. So the reason we do that is so that they blend more easily. So I, I soaked the cashews. Again, I took the boiling water from my little water kettle here. I poured that over the cashews and then I strained out the water. So you strain the water from, from the cashews. Um, these are my cooked beets and they are nicely, I, uh, I steamed them, I removed the skin Removing the skin of the cooked beets is really important. Beets are an amazing food. They're chock full of iron. And they, um, I just love beets. I can't get enough beets. Love ginger, love beets. Uh, I always have a ton of energy after I eat beets and it's because of the iron. They have so much iron. They also have some sugar, but um, the Romans used to say that, consider beets to be an aphrodisiac. So because of the amount of iron and it goes right into the bloodstream. So who knew that your beet salad would be an aphrodisiac this evening? Actually, if truth be known, ceviche is considered to be an aphrodisiac too. Um, anything that gives you protein that's easy to digest technically is considered an aphrodisiac. Okay, so um, I dry toasted the, um, I dry toasted all the spices and you don't have to use all the spices that are in this recipe, but um, we find it to, to be like really, really, really complex. Yes. Hey, Chef. Um, do the cashews have to sit in water? Yes, they have to soak in water. Yes, they do. Okay. So here's our toasted um, spices. Do you have to toast the spices? No. But if you toast the spices, you're going to get a depth of flavor, which is really, really, really nice. So that's what I recommend. Okay, so now we're gonna add, um, we're gonna add some lemon juice, okay? And we're gonna add water, but I'm not gonna add my water yet. I'm also gonna add a pinch of salt here, okay? We're gonna put this on and blend for just a minute. So give me, just bear with me for a second.
spices you just added? Um, so the spices I added, I added some uh, cinnamon, nutmeg, clove. There's also a little bit of uh, uh, Korean red chili flake, which is called gujubaru. You could use a different one. You could use nothing. You, you could omit that entirely if you don't like heat, if you don't like nightshades. Okay, so here is our beautiful beet crema. Okay, this is like a beet salad dressing. You can use it as a salad dressing. You can use it as a crema. You can use it as so many different things. And um, let me see here. And so one of the things that um, that that I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into this container right here. And then after we finish this evening, if I choose to put it into a smaller container and freeze it, I can do that. Um, you would just have to re-blend it after freezing it. But um, there's a, this has so many different possibilities. So we serve this with our tamales in the restaurant. We also serve it as salad dressing. Um, and you can also put it on tacos. There's just no shortage of things uh, to do with this beautiful crema here. So I'm gonna taste the, I'm gonna taste this crema, make sure it has enough uh, salt and acid. I think it does, I think that tastes good. Okay, and it's got some heat to it. Okay, I'm gonna ask my, my son to rinse this out for me. Thank you. And then here comes the, the last recipe, which is the, um, which is actually the, um, the, the cilantro chutney. So with the cilantro chutney, um, we do not want the stems. And so she's, and you're probably saying, well, she doesn't. Why is she not using the stems? The stems have a lot of flavor in them. We're not throwing the stems away. But if we use the stems when we're making the chutney, what's gonna happen is it's gonna get really stringy and it's not going to turn out well. And you're gonna get all these little strings in the, in, in the chutney and you're not gonna like it very much. So this is a good time for you to enlist the help of someone that you love, that you can sit around and you can talk and you can, you know, you can, you can take the, the celery away. We save this for our beverage program back at Farm Table. So at Farm Table, go ahead, sweetie, you can go. Um. Do you want me to give it back to you? Yes, but I want you to rinse it out first. Um, and so what we do is we save the stems, just like this. Okay, we save the stems, and we put the the, uh, the the leaves over here. So if you get the, and these are some of the little hairy things that I'm talking about, um, but you don't have to, you know, if you get some of the top stems, that's fine. It's really the bottom stems that, that are gonna that, that, that are gonna be more problematic. Okay, so while I'm doing this, while I'm doing this, I am gonna make a little bit of headway and I'm gonna take my coconut flake and this coconut flake is just, un, it's unsweetened coconut flake. Um, and so you, if, if you wanna use the grated coconut, you can do that too. I don't think it turns out the same way, um, but these are just, you know, um, these are usually found in the bulk section of your grocery store. So I'm gonna put this now in my blender and um, may I have the top to the blender as well? That would be awesome. And uh, and then what we're gonna do is the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to to blend the, the coconut here. And after we blend the coconut, we will um, actually, um, we're gonna grind it to like a, like almost like a powder. And then we're gonna dump it into a bowl. And then we're going to put, we're gonna actually put our, uh, our cilantro in there and then we will mix everything together very quickly now here's another little tip for you if you you can use any any green you can use basil you can use spearmint um, although spearmint is going to uh, it's going to blacken on you faster um, than than the cilantro basil will also blacken on you a little bit meaning that it's going to lose its vibrancy. It's going to lose that beautiful green color um, after a short period of time because it's going to oxidize. Um, but you can take carrots that are unpeeled. You can put them right here into your uh, food processor and you can grind them up until they're really finely chopped and you can use that with your chutney. And when you, you can do a carrot chutney, you can do a beet chutney. 
um, you can, uh, you know, or you can do any leafy green chutney. And what, and and if you use carrots, if you use beets, you can add turmeric. You can add, uh, you can add turmeric. We are only adding ginger because um, the turmeric is going to discolor our. Um, it's going to discolor the the, um, the the cilantro here. So that's why we're not going to use it tonight. The only ingredients that are going to go into our particular uh, our particular chutney tonight are going to be fresh ginger, pink salt, lemon juice, cilantro, and uh, and the coconut. And we again, you, I mean, I'm telling you what, this stuff on top of uh, lentils, rice, um, tacos, uh, anything. I mean, our one of our famous dishes at the restaurant is something called kitchari, kitchari, depending on how you you pronounce it. And we serve it with a puree. We serve it with something basically like the chia, the carrot chia puree that we made at the beginning of the class. You don't, it could have chia seeds or it could not have chia seeds. It could be made with sweet potatoes. It could be made with beets. It could be made with carrots. By the way, all three of those things that I just mentioned are basically in season in Texas all year round. So if you wanna eat on a more local seasonal basis, those are some, uh, some things that you can source from local farmers almost all year long. Um, because your local farmer's market might not have it, but other farmers in other parts of Texas that are part of like CSAs, like Community Supported Agriculture, um, you can get like a box of produce and you can be eating these things all year round. Yes, sir. Uh, the recipe says that three bunches of, it requires three bunches of cilantro um, and the bag just had one. Will it change the results? No. What we did is we modified, um, that, that was a misprint that we caught um, so, uh, so one bunch for the recipe is just fine. Okay. Uh, and, and actually that was because the recipes had already been sent out and I caught that at the end. It's, um, I apologize for that, but it's just one bunch. And again, we, we adjusted the recipe down, but, um, if you have a big family, if you have a lot of people in your house, um, these recipes, they obviously yield uh, a, a good amount. And so you can, you know, this is something that you should be able to, to, to last more than just one meal, you know? So I have, I see some, some, you know, I've got two kids. Um, I've got, uh, I've got a friend uh, here who has uh, two hungry boys. And so we're all, I know as a, as a working mom, you're always trying to figure out how you can make uh, a meal that's going to give you, you know, give you some sustenance that's gonna last for more than just one meal and where the leftovers taste really good. Okay, so we're almost through here. Are there any other questions while I'm finishing up with my cilantro? Was, ha, did anybody, I'd like to ask if anyone um, uh, uh, has tried the ceviche that they've made yet? Has anybody tried the ceviche? Have they tried the leche tigre? What are they thinking? Do they like it? Is it too hot for them? Give me some feedback. Okay, almost done here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grind this up into a powder. So. Okay, now that's a nice powder. Rosenfield says it's very delightful. It's very delightful. Well, tell Julia that it, coming from her, that means a lot. That means a whole lot because I have a lot of respect for Julia, and I think she's a very smart lady. Okay, so we're, we're going to dump the, uh, let me move my cilantro here. We're going to dump our, our, our coconut here just for a minute, okay? Because we want to be able to, we want to be able to um, to grind our um, our cilantro. So we're going to put our cilantro in here. Okay, our cilantro is in there. I'm going to just finish this real quick. So we just have a little bit more to put in there. And then if you are following me along, another thing that you could be doing right now is you could be grating your fresh ginger and putting it in here. The other thing we're going to have to put in here is some more of our uh, lemon juice, okay? And, um, and then if you want, you can add a little bit of honey to it as well, or you can omit that depending on 
on how much um, or how little you, you want to use. Another thing that I should probably point out is that um, one of the other things that I really like about our ginger meal starter, which is the first recipe that we started with, which is uh, right over here, this juice right here, which is just water, lemon juice, uh, turmeric, and ginger, is an amazing seasoning aid. So if you have that in your refrigerator, I'm telling you what, you've got a secret weapon. And there are so many things that you can season. So a lot of times when we make, like for instance, a soup, um, a lot of recipes will call for a little bit of vinegar at the end to kind of lift everything up. Um, I find that this is my secret sauce. It's the little thing that I go around and I season everything with because when the seasoning is not 100%, if I, if, if I use that, I just, I love it. So it's, I find it to be really, really, really useful. And then you can also warm it up and drink it as a tea. So it should never go into, there's no reason that this should ever go, like get thrown out because you can freeze it. If you want to, you can boil it, you can, you can use it as a seasoning aid, all sorts of things that you can do with that, okay? All right, so then, um, because I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it tonight, I'm gonna put my celery stems in with the rest of my tea scraps. So I'm gonna put these in here like that, and then my tea is gonna be able to be kind of like a, like a clearing house, if you will, for all of my produce that I didn't use this evening, which is really awesome. And I also want to point out that these um, that these are all eco-friendly containers. I say that tongue in cheek because um, one of our clients, who's like an astrophysicist, he used to run the phys uh, uh, he used to be like the top physicist at Southwest Research. He's been buying our meal plans, and he's one of our great best customers. And he did research recently. Um, it, here in San Antonio, apparently we can't compost um, these containers. So my staff and I are kind of at a, uh, we're in a little bit of a, like a quagmire at the, at the moment because we decided as a, as a team to go 100% biodegradable compostable in 2019 and we've been spending a lot of money on these containers which are supposed to be biodegradable compostable, but apparently they're only biodegradable and compostable in Dallas. And they're not biodegradable and compostable here in San Antonio. So I reached out to San Antonio Solid Waste um, to because uh, we are a gold member of their, their uh, we're, we're a gold member restaurant because of our recycling efforts. And I let them know that one of my clients had done this investigative research and come back with the with this information, and so I'm still waiting on an answer. So if anybody out there um, knows anything, please keep me informed because I'm trying to figure out a great um, what to do. Because here we are, we're takeout only, we're delivery only. Every other restaurant in San Antonio is delivery only, and I'm hoping that we don't wake up with a big hangover after this is all over and a landfill that we don't know what to do with. So we need to start working together to figure out what we're going to do. Hey, chef. Yeah. Can you give some examples of how you would use ginger, turmeric, or lemon as seasoning aid? How I would use ginger, turmeric, or lemon? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, I would use all three as a seasoning aid for just about everything. So lemon juice goes on everything. It goes on every vegetable that you ever cook. Um, ginger and turmeric, um, as long as you, know, you, you have two choices, you can either... Um, um, you can either blend the turmeric and the ginger up into a, almost like a sauce and you can serve it as, um, you know, like and you can put that into your soups, you can put that into your sauces, or you can grate it fresh with the microplane. And, um, and I'm telling you, it's like a trinity. It's like a holy trinity. Ginger, turmeric, and lemon juice are the holy trinity of the farm table kitchen. And they are a seasoning aid together. They're like its own seasoning. And it brightens, it gives a little bit of spice, it gives flavor, it gives acidity, and it helps you so that then you don't have to use so much of this. If you have acid, you know, if you have acid and if you have, you know, all six flavors, you don't have to use, or all five flavors, you don't have to use as much salt because salt is one of the, one of the six flavors. So Thank now I'm gonna put... Um, so... SJ, mean mint. Um, how do you use those seasoning aids to make the pickled ginger? Oh, 
Okay, we'll go right back over that. Okay, so here, we're gonna put this back on and we're gonna make our, our cilantro chutney here. And I'm gonna see if I can do this in a more slow way here. Low and slow. I don't wanna just completely annihilate this. But I'm gonna have to turn that off and I'm gonna have, if you have your little pestle at home, your Vitamix comes with a pestle. This would be a great time for you to use that pestle. Um, I don't have my pestle here at home. It's at the restaurant. So, um, like pretty much everything else I own that is in the kitchen, most chefs don't have a lot of their stuff at home. They have most of their stuff at the restaurant. So, kitchen confidential. Okay, so we're gonna turn this on. We're going to keep going, and here we go. I actually think that um, I'm going to need more lemon juice. Or not. Let's see if this takes. Okay. If, you, if it's wet, you know, it's going to... Um, the coconut will absorb the, uh, the, the lemon juice. Um, and this again, is definitely something that has at least a couple days shelf life. I give this two to three day shelf life with the green. If you do it out of carrot or beet, you're gonna have like a five day shelf life, okay? So we're gonna take a little bit of this juice right here, all right, because I've used up all my lemon juice. And I'm gonna add a little bit of this and we're gonna go back over what I did with this, okay? So I'm gonna add just a little bit of this. Okay. And I'm gonna add some of my fresh ginger because I forgot to do that. I'm gonna come back over here and, and add a little bit more. See if this works. I'm gonna oops. Okay. So this, the way we're gonna assemble this particular dish right here, we're gonna get a bowl, we're gonna get our noodles, we're gonna do a nice um, uh, swipe of our beet crema on the bowl, we're gonna add a little bit more, and then we're gonna top it with this, okay? just about done. Okay. So here we have our chutney. Okay. And it is smells delicious. If you even if you're not a cilantro lover, I don't see how anybody doesn't like this. I've heard some of our customers refer to it as crack. I mean, people love to, to order it. Um, they love it on everything. I think it sets everything off. Um, and it's a really nice accompaniment to uh, tacos, to, um, to the salad that we're gonna have right now. And I love it on kitchery. So on a rice dish, this is absolutely delicious. If you also made, um, like a, uh, one of the things that we've also been serving in our keto bags is like cauliflower rice. And so it's a cauliflower rice and we serve it, we, we serve all of our kitchery um, with uh, any, with, with some sort of a, uh, a chutney. And so it could be a carrot chutney, it could be a beet chutney, it could be a, a cilantro chutney, okay? 
makes so, a chutney? What yes, makes sir. a chutney? What makes a chutney? Something, it's like a sauce. It's basically a, it's, it, it, it's, an, it's a word that's used in India to re refer to like a, a chunky sauce. It could be something that's been cooked. It could be something that is, uh, is more, it is more, a little bit more chunky like this. But um, it's absolutely delicious, okay? And so here's our chutney. So um, let's go back over what we did with this, okay? We started with our mandolin, okay? We started with our mandolin. And what we did is we took nice slices of the, mand uh, of, of the ginger, like this, okay? Nice thin slices of the ginger. And we took lemon juice, we took fresh turmeric, and then we took hot boiling water. And we poured hot boiling water over the turmeric powder and the lemon juice, and then we added our, our, our ginger. And so since the beginning of the class, this particular ginger has been marinating, right? So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make you a little bit of the, uh, the ginger meal starter. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So this piece of ginger is probably a little bit big, um, you don't want to have like a huge piece of ginger in the ginger meal starter. Um, a small piece is, is, is sufficient. You're going to get a little bit of this juice right here, okay? And then we're going to add uh, a little bit of, of this right here, which is, the, um, which is the, the honey and the fresh herb. And we're going to add that here. We, we have these beautiful little Asian spoons that we use at a farm table, but you don't need to have that at home, right? And then you put a little pinch of salt on here, okay? And so you have a fresh herb, which would be your, um, which would be like some, anything in the mint family, anything in the spearmint family I like. Um, and again, you can use mint, you can use spearmint, either way. We've got honey, we've got ginger, We've got uh, lemon juice and now a little bit of salt. And I'm gonna eat this. It's like a symphony in your mouth. So when you taste and you chew all six flavors in the Ayurvedic flavor wheel, you taste pungent, astringent, sour, sweet and salty at the same time in your mouth. And so when we do cooking classes at farm table, I like to have people chew the ginger meal starter 15 to 20 times. Just like swish it in your mouth, just like you would wine, right? You're opening up all these different parts of your mouth that you didn't know existed. And it is absolutely a fantastic experience. So let's make our, um, we're, we're gonna plate up our beet noodle salad Give me one, one quick second. Okay. Um, we are gonna take some of our beet noodles right here. Like this. Okay, our beet, this is our beet crema. If I really wanted, you know, there's no reason I couldn't use that, that carrot and sweet potato chia hummus on this too. It would be absolutely delicious to be a nice little base, but it's not the recipe, so I'm not going to do it. But um, I have a hard time following following rules, so following always following the recipe. Um, I don't know if anybody else here is like that too, but I like to kind of just improv. So now we're going to add our beautiful noodles here, which the noodles are a lot softer than than uh, when we first began. They're a lot softer. Now they've been marinated. They've been able to marinate with the, the lemon juice and, and the ginger. And we're gonna add a little bit of this chutney like this, okay? And if I wanted more, more, more dressing, I could, but I think I'm just gonna leave it like that, okay? So there's our, our close-up of our beet noodle salad with the beet crema and the chutney. And we're going to put this, we're going to bring this over here uh, to, to the table, right? And then we have our ginger meal starter, which is just going to go into our refrigerator. And it's going to be something that we use, um, that we use, you know, over the period of a, of a whole week. 
you don't use the ginger meal starter, you don't think that you're gonna use it, you sh this should last you at least a week. Um, so you'll put a top on this. If you don't have a top, one of the things that I've been buying are these cute little um, uh, oiled canvas things. And so if, instead of using plastic, you can just use this oiled uh, canvas right here and then you can put it in your refrigerator. And voila, there you go. Yeah. So are there any further questions that uh, people want me to answer? Not at the moment. Okay, great. Well, thank you guys for tuning in with us and we will be sending out a, uh, a post recap after the class. This has been a fun live stream. Uh, thank you for, for joining us and I hope that everyone has a delicious uh, that everyone has delicious dinner tonight and maybe even lunch tomorrow and maybe even dinner tomorrow night. Thanks. Are we good? Ha <laughs> <laughs>